everyone. I hope you guys are doing good this evening. Thank y'all so much for joining me. I see it's already lit in here. Folks are going in with the gifts and the memes. It's a lot to get into over the next two hours, child. So if you want to chime in, make sure your hand is raised. So I can bring you up on stage. But it's been a lot of discussion as of late um, about the state of R&B. Is R&B dead? Now, people have been talking about the state of R&B for years now because I honestly feel like music is not the same as it was when I was younger. You know, um, it's too much merging of hip hop and R&B. And I get it as far as music or maybe being featured. Like, let's say it's an R&B song featuring a rapper. We were used to that. But like I've said for a while, I can't even tell the difference between the rap girls and the so-called R&B singers. You know, I, I've called out Chloe for this. Like, she's so overly sexualized in her clothes and, and the way she dresses. There's no difference between her swag and her style and a Cardi B or a Meg Thee Stallion. You know, I just feel like it's changed a lot. And the same can be said for the men. There was a certain level of standard when we were growing up. I remember, you know what, to be honest with you, till this day, I don't even like to hear cuss words in R&B music. I don't know why it I don't it just bothers me for some reason. Like I can listen to the most hardcore gangster. We about to do a drive by an air body type song. But again, if I'm going into that song, I'm expecting to hear, you know, what I'm saying tough stuff. I'm expecting to hear bitches ain't shit. And, you know, niggas this and niggas that. It's still like, I don't know, when I listen to R&B music and I hear them dropping the N word and bitch this and it, it just doesn't feel right to me. It come, I don't know, it's just too vulgar for what I grew up listening to when it came to R&B. When it came to R&B, it was more sensual. They were telling a story. It made you feel good. But a lot of these new R&B songs to me are no different than hip hop songs. It's like, it's just totally merged into hip hop. Even the way they act, the way they dress, you can't really tell the difference now between these R&B artists versus these hip hop artists. I mean, we're growing up, we had groups like Boys to Men, Jodeci, H-Town, and they all had their own type of swag. You know, uh, Playa, um, what is that group? My group, my group with the two twins, Jagged Edge. You know, they all had their own style and flavor, but you knew they were R&B. You know, even Destiny's Child, when they came out total, you knew they were R&B. They weren't trying to be rappers. They weren't trying to, they merged with rappers, don't get me wrong. They worked with rappers, but you knew it was an R&B song. And at this point, everything is so merged. Yes, SWV, 702. It was about the vocals. You know what I'm saying? I never would watch a SWV video and expect them to like break down all this hardcore choreography. I, you know, I never watched Total rolling around on the ground in body, you know, in leotards and, you know, with their crotch wide open. They got up there and they did their job, which was to sing. Yes, immature, honey. You know, it was like, it was such a difference in the music back in the day. And when I tell you that versus battle really hurt a lot of people's, I, I, I guess you could say feelings, definitely ego, but a lot of people were really hurt watching that because even the excuses afterwards were bullshit. Oh, we couldn't hear ourselves. Oh, the microphones were tripping. Oh, this and that. Technical issues aside, there was a lack of respect on that stage. And uh, Q uh, Parker from 112, he came out and he did like a 20 minute video where he kind of ran it. And he really held these guys accountable. And I really respect him because so many times we just let things fly by the wayside and we're too scared to call people out. You know, we don't have to knock these brothers and, you know, call them out their name and say they're not shit. Nobody's saying that. But what we're saying is that you come from a long line of people before you and you have to respect the craft, period. You have to respect the craft. If you're not going to respect it, then don't call yourself an R&B singer. You know what I'm saying? Call yourself a reality TV star. Call yourself a rapper. But do not disrespect R&B and everybody who fought to get to where you're at, where you're making millions. Because remember back in the day, a lot of R&B singers didn't get paid like that. You know, people always quote that Cadillac Records move on them. Gave them a Cadillac, but they have no money, no no generational wealth to pass down. So the fact that these young men are able to eat and venture off 
from R&B and singing into selling noodles, right, Jay, and scooty bikes and, and earbuds and all this stuff. Don't dare disrespect the craft just because you have money coming from all other angles. So I want to go ahead and play you guys a small clip of what Q had to say. Um, like I said, it was a 20-minute rant. I'm not going to play the whole thing, of course. But I want y'all to listen to what Q had to say about the situation in case you missed it. And I'm going to go ahead and start taking calls. I want to say that when Boys to Men gave my generation the torch, we handled it with care. I almost want to say that my generation didn't prepare the next generation properly because they missed it. They missed the mark, y'all. Third thing, syllabus page number 86. We ain't drunk on stage, yo. How you gonna be smooth and you inebriated? We can't, no, man. That's, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That is not it, man. We don't do that. We don't do that singing each other's songs because you think you can sound sing it better like that's just disrespectful it's disrespectful yo it's disrespectful man i had so many oh and then point number five and this is just this is when i just listen i don't care what happened on your live last week or whatever? Man, we ain't bringing no props on stage, bro. Especially no fruit. I don't know. Man, that that action alone just set the R&B male genre back 15 years. And I get it. You wanted to, you know, emulate, you know, performing oral sex on stage but man you're a performer be be creative man there are way more classy sexy swagged out ways you could have emulated you portraying oral sex than a watermelon like i want to understand who was in the room when omarion said hey Tomorrow, somebody don't forget, don't forget, don't forget to go get the watermelon, so we, I can do that thing on stage. Because whoever was the dude that went to get it, went to get it, as a community, we need to fire that dude. Cause somebody needed to be in that room, and say, "Hey, bro, that's whack as hell." It was, man. It was, man. It was, it was a clown act. That was, I was embarrassed. Number five. As if we ain't already in the midst of COVID and just for sanitary measures. Why you going to bite the watermelon? Give it to a bunch of people you don't know. They going to bite it. Then you bite it back. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> RL, man, come on. Come in here, man. Come in here, man, and, and talk. Because you was raised the same way I was raised. Okay, so y'all just heard what Q Parker had to say. That is Q from 112. They have put in work for years. And so I'm just so glad that somebody in the industry who has lots of hits under their belt really caught, caught out these guys. Because like he said, even with O'Melon, because that's what we call Omarion now, him bringing out that watermelon was just a distraction. You know, when you're a true singer, you don't need props. You don't need to do all of that. A true singer can emulate sex without having a physical prop okay so I, I just love the fact that he held him accountable and like he said we're de we're dealing with covid and you're eating out a watermelon you're you're passing it off you're passing it off to the fans they're giving it back to you you know now imagine if everybody who ate that watermelon now gets covid it was just way too much going on and the ones who really took it seriously to me were mario sammy and pleasure p but then there was also a level of disrespect, like she was saying, you know, the speaking over each other, um, sitting there trying to out sing somebody, even though Ray J did a, a shitty, a, a porpoise job singing One Wish, it wasn't everybody else's place to jump in and sing it, you know? So there was just like a lack of disrespect 
amongst everybody. You know, so let me go ahead and start taking calls. Please raise your hand. Um, I'm going to start bringing people to the stage. Make sure you stay muted until I call your name. Um, let's see here. Tia Chanel, you're on the stage. Go ahead and unmute your microphone. Hey, T. Hey, everybody. Can you hear me? You sound really low. Okay, hang on. Let me see. Okay, that's better. That's way better. All right, all right. Hey, guys. So I'm an R&B girl, so I take this very personal. And I think it's funny because I caught your live the other day when you were saying you were going to do this show. And then this mm -hmm. weekend, Giveon was on and he sucked at the BET Awards. So I was like, oh, T done did it again. So, <laughs> <laughs> so first of all... Um, I don't think R&B is dead. I think it's on life support because like you said, there's too much trap influence with the sound. Um, not just with um, R&B, but even in gospel music, they're trying to have like a trap sound to it because it's what's hot right now. And um, mm. I don't like it because, you know, I get a little embarrassed because, you know, people, I was born in 1992. So people kind of... Mm. Uh, uh, clown me like oh you're always listening to uh them r&b from back in the day but it's like nothing moves me this these days you know um before mm -hmm. it's like they have songs about when when you're falling in love or when you realize you have a crush on somebody or when you know like uh you want to make love to somebody not just get screwed like that's all it is now and r&b is just too whiny it's too whispery t they don't beg for coochie no more Nobody begs for coochie anymore. It's just, you know, um, I did my girl dirty. I'm going to go to the strip club and uh, forget about it. Like Genuine, Usher, all of them. They said, you know, that in Jodeci, all of them, uh, <laughs> they did that for us. They was in the bathtub, but they closed on crying. They was outside in the rain crying. They don't do any of that anymore, T. And mm -hmm. it's sad because there's still a market for R&B, but it's not being catered to. And a lot of artists, I feel like, are missing out on the bag by not having a good R&B um, track, personally. Right. Can you turn down the background? Because I can hear myself. Okay. It looks like it stopped. It was it was echoing. But yeah, and, and think about it. Bringing up Jodeci, let's talk about the Basement Crew. I talked about them when I did the whole Static Major deep dive. Now, yeah, I caught that video. Right. So as, as bad as sometimes people want to say about Devontae Swing, one thing about Devontae is he did not play. He took, he lived, breathed, and ate R&B. He was a songwriter, a dope singer. Now, granted, he could definitely be abusive. He gonna throw a chair or two. He gonna, you know, he gonna not be the artist for a few days. But I Last think name was swing. Was, yeah, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? They didn't call him swing for no reason. But the reason why he was also so tough is because he took it so seriously. And the reason why a lot of the people who are part of the basement crew took it so seriously and were willing to go through that is because they were hungry and they wanted it. They wanted to learn that talent. They wanted to learn about songwriting, producing, making beats. And look at how many people came from the basement crew who were successful. From Missy to Static to Timbaland, Magoo, you know, it, it, Genuine. They all came from that class. Even Stevie J, you know, he had right. dealing with them. And it's like back then people had to really home in on their craft. You had to know how to play instruments. Like as messy as Stevie J might be, like I always said, I would never take his talent from him. I mean, that man made beats just from dreams. And he would wake up and these beats would be in his head. His musical catalog and the things that he wrote and produced in the 90s for Bad Boys was insane. I don't get none of that vibe nowadays. There's no one that I can say is the next Devontae Swing, Stevie J, Static Major. I just don't see it. No, I, I agree. And, you know, it's crazy that with, you know, these upcoming, uh, you know, with millennials and Gen Z, we have this obsession with nostalgia. Like we want to dress like the 90s. We want to do all these reboots with these movies and um, these TV shows. But for some reason, y'all can't get the sound back. Y'all can't get that R&B music that, you know. Um, that we love so much. Y'all want to redo everything but that. And that's what stands out to me more than even the fashion. Like It's the music because we play that all the time so much it gets sampled. And I hate how these new artists, they just disrespect the ones that came before them. They got so much disrespect for Usher, for all these people. Oh, they're old. They're washed up. That man can right. still sing and dance at the same time. And y'all can barely even sing and want to blame equipment and say it's the mic, it's this, it's that. 
And I just, I really don't like that. And I just feel like soul has left R&B. There's no soul. And it's almost mm-hmm. kind of like, it's like a trance when you listen to it. Like, like it's like, you know, it's hypnotizing you. And music T, especially R&B, it's not long anymore. The songs be two minutes, you know? Yeah. And it's like, and it's just overtly to- sexual. And, you know, even like when you look at the videos, it has nothing to do with the song. Like even that Chloe song, the first one that she came out with, which I thought was a cool kind of a club banger. But then when I watched the video and the boy goes missing and she turns into Medusa, what the hell does this have to do with R&B? Like, I didn't, I didn't leave that video feeling good. Like, I left scared. I needed to pray. Like, what, like, what is this? Like, when right. we watched R&B videos back in the day, they were fun. Think about the TLC, What About Your Friends? All those bright colors and everybody dancing and, you know, at college. We don't see videos like that anymore. Or There's like no story. Like a, like red light special, mm-hmm. like one in a million. It's like people don't understand the simplicity of being sexy and sensual. They just think, let me flash my coochie and my butt and my boobs. And like, no, that's not what draws people in. And I don't understand why it's so hard and why people keep missing the mark. But, you know, like I said, um, this is my genre. I still, I actually saw 112 uh, last month. Uh, it was just slim and some backup dancers, but he sounded great. John B sounded good. Um, they still sound great. And so uh, I, I just I just hate that they get disrespected. And like you said, it's pretty privileged because boys to men, I'm sorry, all right? Those mm-hmm. men have no sex appeal. They have zero. They owe sex appeal. But I don't listen to them because I I find them attractive. Their music mm-hmm. hits me hits different, you know? And so mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, it's nice to have an artist who looks good, but what's the point if they're not talented? Right. And that's another thing we have to understand, too. You know, the new generation beefing with the ones that came before them. We only do this in hip hop and R&B in the black genres. Like white people revere their old rock stars. You know, what I mean, them old rock stars to this day, U2, Rolling Stone and whoever yes. else, they can go on tour, kiss. Yes. And it's just a level of respect. They wouldn't dare disrespect those who came before them. We have Young, you know, the new generation going at it on Twitter and Instagram with the, oh, you old, you washed up. We the best group. We this, we that. And it's like, yo, they paved the way. You have to show right. respect to these people. Like Jacquees saying he's the king of R&B. Sir, you are the jester, okay? I hate, I hate when he does samples. And he was at the concert too. I ain't gonna lie. He sounded good. He got a lot mm-hmm. of stamina. He put on a good show. But sir... You are no Jodeci, you are no Usher, you are no Keith Sweat. He's nasty, but you don't even R. Kelly. So you just need to, there's no humility. And I just, I don't respect it, T. But (laughs) that's all I had to say. I know you got other callers. Um, So you guys have a good night, uh, T and T sippers. All right, Tia. Thanks for calling in, sis. Bye. Bye. All right, let me go ahead and bring on Muchilla. Muchilla, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Hey, T. Hey, sis, how are you? I'm fine. I just got a little cold. Um, you know what they did? They took love out of R&B. Mm. They took the love out of R&B and they took, they don't let you have an, an imagination. They okay. tell you, they reveal too much when, when they, when they write. I had, I was writing with a young guy and I was like, that's too much. Were you saying how you're going to lick this and lick that? And, no. Let, leave it to the imagination. Right. Some things don't have to always be said. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.